everybody, Gina DeLuca here. All right, today I'm gonna to be doing another spiral straight pour. This one is a limited palette. This is a monochromatic uh, straight pour. I get amazing 3D effects uh, doing uh, the monochromatic, great boulder cells um, or cloud cells. Generally, uh, you call them cloud cells when you're using the satin enamel because it has like that very cloud-like appearance. Um, so the colors that we have going on today, I have Liquitex Basics Thalo Blue, um, Artist Loft the Soft Body uh, in White, and the Deco Art Americana Decor Metallic, I'm sorry, Americana Decor uh, Satin Enamel in uh, Pure White. So the way that I have these mixed, this paint, this is my background color slash base coat. And this is Thalo Blue with a touch, just a tiny bit of the white to brighten it up a little bit because it does dry very, very dark. And I wanted it to be a bit of a brighter blue. And so that is kind of what we wind up with. And then these paints, these are my cell makers. So I start with um, a mixture of the satin enamel and whatever other paint I'm going to mix it with. It's a 50-50 mix. So this one is 50% satin enamel and 50% phthalo blue. And then this one is 50% satin enamel. And then it's a phthalo blue uh, and the titanium or and the, uh, the white. And then this one is 50% satin enamel and it's more white. Um, it's just it, like a drop of blue. Like it only takes the tiniest bit of the phthalo blue to tint. So be very, very careful how much you add. Uh, so I do the 50-50 mix of the satin enamel and whatever other paint I'm tinting it with. And then I add two parts Floetrol to that 50-50 paint mixture. So then it becomes one part paint to two parts Floetrol. So if I'm mixing two ounces, uh, or say less, I'm mixing three ounces, I would do a half ounce of satin enamel, a half ounce of some other paint, and then two ounces of Floetrol. And then that mixture I thin with my concoction <laughs> of 90% water and 10% Floetrol until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. If that was confusing, just rewind it and write it down if you need to. Um, so I thin my Floetrol and paint, you can probably see it better on this one, until I get the consistency that I want, which is this. This is about a two on my consistency scale. It is making a mound. It does disappear quickly. It is making a nice, even, thin stream off of my stick. It should come off like looking like a pencil lead. You don't want it to get like thin and then thick and thin and then thick. If that is the case, you need to mix it more. And that is what we're working with today. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration Cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There are 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint, brand, color, the consistency, the recipe, of course, the technique, all of the things that I can't fit on a card. This is a picture of the painting that is in that video. This, is, this box contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, you have the color palette that was used in this painting. 
And then these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette. I love those limited palettes. Or you could build off of those two colors. And there are also eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also at amazon.com. All right, the first order of business is I'm going to put some of this paint in my cup. I wanna make sure I have enough for my pour because I want to make sure I have enough paint to get the reaction that I'm looking for. And then I'm going to lay down my base coat. You will notice I have already covered my edges. Straight pours, the way that I mix them, are a bit on the thin side. And sometimes that does not give you the greatest coverage on your sides. So I like to paint my sides first to make sure that I'm getting the coverage that I want. But on these round canvases in particular, the sides are puckered. So if your paint goes over the side, it may not cover the little puckers on the side. So I like to just be as proactive as possible, making sure that my sides will be beautiful whether the paint sticks or not. Okay, I'm going to put a bit on my little thing here. It's easier to do it with your finger on these round canvases because of the pucker. On a canvas that has a straight edge, I can just use my little tool, but I wanna make sure that my sides are evenly primed so that my paint slides off the sides evenly. If there's a dry spot, it may not tip over the edge the way that you want. It may not cover the side the way that you want. Sometimes it avoids those dry spots. So this just helps it along. Not a step that I would skip, personally. Okay, going to pull out old Bernie two times and pop these bubbles in my base coat. And now put the paint in the cup. Always be sure to check your consistency before loading up your cup. The sauce may thicken upon standing. Okay, I'm going to pour this from up high. I want this to sink. I want these paints to blend as they're going into the cup. And then when they come out of the cup and they're partially blended, that is what gives those awesome boulder cells. And so I start with the darkest color, work my way to the lightest color. I like to have the lightest color go in last because whatever color goes in last, I tend to have a little bit of that end up at the very bottom of my cup, which winds up at the very center of my painting. And that gives me the best contrast. Okay. I have a bit of my paint left and I'm going to cover up the paints that have risen to the top because all of the paints, all of my cell makers need to have some of 
the other paint to react with. You gotta have that background paint reacting with the cell makers. One more round of bubble popping. Okay, so now I'm going to pour quickly, spin slowly, and I'm going to try to be in as much in the center as I can maintain. It can be tricky, but uh, we do what we can. All right, here we go. If I spin slower, I get more of a spiral effect. If I spin faster, it will look more like a traditional ring pour. And I can see I have gone terribly off center. Oh dear, okay. And as I get closer to the bottom of the cup, I will get closer to the canvas and I will start spinning even slower. This gives me a lot more control over what happens in the center. And I'm going to wait for that lightest color to come out. Praying that it does. It usually does, don't let me down. Here it comes. And I like to get one and a half turns in once that latest color comes out. That's what gives it that Fibonacci look. Perfect. 10 on that dismount. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But I have to center <laughs> this a bit. So if it winds up a little wonky like this, what is most important is that your center is centered. You can manipulate the paint to get it to spin more in a direction that you want. So I kind of want this side a little bit more. So I'm just going to push it a little bit to that side on my spinner. So when I spin it, it'll pull it that way and then I can do the same with the other sides if it needs it. But what is most important is that your center is centered. So as I let this sit, these cells will develop. This is how you get the boulder cells. You're patient. Grab your old trusty torch, start popping these bubbles. And what's gonna happen is the bubbles that are lying in the layers of paint underneath will come to the top and they will bring some of the paint with it. And the thing about these deco art paints is they are matte. And when you use a matte paint with a glossier paint, you get what is called the hydrophobic effect. And so it's bringing the paint up and then that paint is pushing away the other paints. So those cells will expand 
And if I let them expand before I tilt, I can make these cells even bigger. If I tilted it right away, I could still get cells like this, but this is as big as they're gonna get. If I allow them to develop first, if I let that paint puddle percolate, then I can stretch those cells out and make them bigger. So that is what we're doing. And you might need to pop the bubbles a couple of times. Most of what's happening on these edges is going to get tilted off. This is going to get stretched out. The center is the most important part here uh, because that is gonna be the focal point. That is going to get stretched the most. I'm still trying to determine, am I centered? I think I am. All right, I think we can give this a spin now. We have some nice cell development, some beautiful 3D effect going on in there. Let's give her a spin. We don't have to spin quickly. Okay, that's already on that side. Let me tilt this to the other side. Is that catching on something? So whatever side you have it pushed toward is where it's going to have the most effect, um, centrifugal force. If you think about those little merry-go-rounds that they have on the playground when you were a kid, if you were in the center, you were cool. If you were sitting on the edge and you get some brawny little bully out there and he spins it hard, you're flying off of that thing. Same concept. So. That is what is happening here. So far, so good. Some really beautiful cells going on. So the satin enamels are very, very strong cell makers. Um, I could have used a lot less and gotten some more, uh, some more negative space, but we can do that for the next one. want to keep going? I don't think so. Maybe just a little bit. Okay, I think that's gonna do it. Yep, okay, I'm gonna leave it alone and I'm gonna let it do whatever it's gonna do. Might get more cells popping up. Um, I will say that I do not torch satin enamels after I have tilted them or stretched them. I have found that um, I have a tendency to get some cracking if I do that. Also, if you're using more than 50% satin enamel, you can get some cracking in the dried piece as well. So don't torch after you tilt. 
and make sure that your ratio is proper and you shouldn't have any issues with cracking. So I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna bring you in for close up, back in a few. Okay, here it is. This has been sitting for a while. I don't anticipate any more changes. Got some cool 3D looking, look like stones on the side. Awesome 3D action on this one. The glow in the center on this piece is stunning. It looks like it's lit. Awesome 3D boulder cells. Happy with the composition. And the center, the way it glows. Gosh. I mean, is it any wonder why this is my favorite technique? <laughs> yep good stuff but this is the wet piece and i will bring you in for the dry piece in just a moment <laughs> satchmo says hi okay here it is dry it has not changed anymore except it is now not shiny. Um, having a bit of a allergy day today, so that's why I sound a little rough. But gorgeous piece, loving this one. The center is glowing. I go for that. That is a goal of mine when I'm doing these. Some nice glowy spots there. Lots of depth on this piece, lots of 3D action. Very happy with this one, no complaints. Good stuff. Well, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please do like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you click that bell when you subscribe. If you are already subscribed and you haven't been getting notifications of my videos, make sure you click that bell. YouTube changed something, and uh, it has been a real pain in the booty for all of the creators. So please click the bell. Um, check out the description box below for links to... My PayPal tip jar, if you feel so inclined. You will find the um, affiliate links for Arteza and Deco Art and several other uh, wonderful companies. You'll find the coupon codes and the affiliate links in the description box below. And you will also find there the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and the Fluid Art Inspiration cards for sale. And you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. Join us there, post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. It is the internet after all. I don't think this is ever going to not be my favorite technique. Just look at those 3D effects. Look how cool that is. Man, oh man, good stuff. But that is it for me for today. Um, stay tuned. This week I will have some uh, announcements coming up. And, and so I'll probably put up a video with an announcement. Uh, little teaser there. Okay, that's it for me for today. I hope you all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.